Why would God allow blankety blank into heaven? Be careful. That person could be one of God's sheep. And you may be the one on the way to hell. Keep watching to find out where you stand. Hey there, you're tuned in to Belief is All. If you're free grace, then grace and peace unto you. If you're not free grace, well, let's just see how you feel by the end of this message. So we're now five messages deep preaching the gospel. We've taken down the inappropriate use of faith without works is dead. We've exposed the cult of hyper grace. And we deflected the idiocy of even demons believe and tremble. So what else is in the arsenal of the unsaved? One that comes to mind is the questioning of certain people getting into heaven. Like, for example, why would God allow a homosexual into heaven? Or why would God allow a murderer into heaven? And on the surface, it seems like a legitimate question. After all, homosexuality and murder are two pretty clear sins in the Bible. It even warns them of being in danger of hell. So why am I making this seemingly contrary video? Stick around until the end, and we'll get it cleared up. First and foremost, we need to know how to get into heaven, and we're not going to tarry here. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Belief is all you need. It's not of works, lest any man should boast. What are works? They're deeds. Things one can do according to the law of God that make one closer with him. But here's the thing. No one has, can, or will ever be able to keep the whole of the law. And if you fulfill all but fail at one point, you're guilty of all. James 2.10 So therefore, since no man can fulfill the law, salvation can't come of it. More on that coming up, but before we move forward, make sure you like the video for the algo flow and subscribe for more messages. Anyway, this is why my fellowship goes so hard trying to rightfully divide the word. If you front or backload works into the gospel message of salvation, you've created a counterfeit, a false gospel that will make double a child of hell. Works are a good thing. You may even call them our reasonable service, like Romans 12 and 1. I'd even double down and say that after you've been saved, try to be better than you were. Go for profitable faith if you can. But even if your faith is profitable, those works cannot save you. Yet fake faithers out there are browbeating people in the street and even members of their own families into this unachievable goal of sinlessness. Here's the thing they don't get. You don't know everyone's backstory. You can't know when one's life will change. You don't know how deep they were into their wickedness. You don't know what resources they have or who's in their circle. If final judgment is served to the fish by its ability to climb a tree, then of course it's damned to hell, because the fish will fail to climb the tree then, now, and in the future. On top of that, consider this. Even if you are a relatively privileged guy who grew up in a higher trust area and was raised in a wholesome household and has wholesome friends and would be susceptible to a faster change, how many works would he have to do in order to merit salvation? Is it seven? Perhaps 70? 7,000 summing up? You don't know. Not just because of what isn't written, but because of what is. There's no repentance of sin in the Bible, but there is being saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Christ alone. So why would God let a homosexual, a murderer, or any kind of sinner into heaven? Because if they do what the word says and believe in Jesus, they cannot go to hell. Jesus already paid it all. And besides, did you forget that you're a murderer and an adulterer? Have you ever hated someone? Most of my audience are males between 25 and 37, so I know if you worked anywhere, you definitely have. Have you ever seen someone attractive and thought, I tapped that? Again, grown men, I know you have. If you didn't marry that person, you're an adulterer. Jesus says all of this on the Sermon of the Mount. He was illustrating how impossible it was for a human to follow the laws of the days of old, doubling down on them and making them even more damning. Matthew 5 and 20, For I tell you that unless your righteousness surpassed that of the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, you will certainly not enter the kingdom of heaven. Spoiler alert, you aren't more righteous than a first century Jewish high priest. Jesus imputes righteousness that surpasses the Pharisees. Jesus is all you need. So trust in him. Believe that he came, died, and rose again to cover your sins. If you want to hear more about the gospel of Jesus Christ, there's a playlist down below to help you on your Christian walk. 
You've been listening to Belief Is All. If you are free grace, Godspeed and blessings. If you are free grace, hey, try watching another one until you get it. I'd highly recommend my last video debunking even demons believe and tremble. See you there, and see you all in the next one.